The steady rest is kind of a homemade affair. The idea being that this shaft is tapped and threaded for a 5 16 bolt. Then this curved plate catches a hold of the slides on the lathe. And by turning that around like that, and using this half inch socket on the end of an extension, you can reach up through the bottom of the lathe bed. And by drawing that bolt up, I pinch that bar up against the lathe bed. and lock it down nice and securely. Now since we're going to be turning this piece for the Swan drill press, what I need to do is bring that up on center and the easiest way to do that for me is to bring the center up to it like that then snug these down And it's a matter of centering up the steady rest. And that involves spinning the three bolts so that they just pick up the shaft a bit off the center. Now I'm going to attempt to center the shaft in 
the chuck. Well, that's pretty amazing. It's actually quite close right now. Get it out of here a little bit so I got the needle. Out there. I can see it a little easier. I'm about six thousandths that around. That's positive. And that's negative. That means I need to tighten this jaw and loosen the one I have my finger on. And I want to turn it so it moves about two thousandths. Now we should be closer to center. Now it looks like we have a cam in our shaft. Well, we're out about three thousandths, and I think of the state of this shaft's in, the state that this shaft is in, that's pretty darn good. Okay. Now comes the rough and noisy part. drilling out the end of the shaft. Slide the Jacob's chuck in there. I'm going to start out drilling with a quarter inch drill. No particular reason other than 
I like that size to start with. It's, it's strong enough to take the gaff of doing the primary hole, but not so big that it overloads the lathe. Bring the drill bit up so it almost touches. I want to be able to back it all the way out. Now we start drilling. Before we get too rambunctious, I got to remove my measurement tool here. Quick way to break something. And I think with a quarter inch drill, I need to go a little faster. Quarter inch drill, I should be running about 1200 RPMs. give it a little shot of oil. You can kind of get an idea how badly that bearing is worn by looking at it while it's turning. The shaft is running 3 thousandths out. This thing's got a 50 thousandths hop in it. That's a pretty good wear in the bearing. Now we'll increase the size of the drill. Wipe the drill bit off, get the oil off of it and the metal shavings. And we'll go in there with a half inch drill. Slow down lay it.
clean off the drill bit, put it back in the box, put the box back in the drawer. Because now we got to go in with some bigger drill bits. Let's see just how big I need to take this thing out to. If it hadn't been three days since I did this, I probably would remember this number, but I'm going to double check it anyways. That comes out to 825. Well, three quarters comes out to 750, so I think we're pretty close. Close enough I can leave it like that. That means I want to put the three quarter inch drill bit in there. leave me about 50 thousandths under which should put me well into that key and I'm gonna go lower on the speed still Take long to bottom that one out, did it? Uh, we definitely cut into the key. I think we're almost to the point where there's no shaft left. Yeah, there's only a smidgen of the shaft left in there. I think I'm better off cutting that shaft off.
I was able to pull that last little bit of pin out of the keyway there and now we have a clear and clean gear I'm going to put this gear on the back of the bench keep it out of trouble and now I can remove the shaft and the steady rest Funny, the shavings from that shaft actually look more like cast iron than steel. Steel usually comes out, out in curls. This broke up into little bitty chips. I didn't have a chip break around the drill bit, so I'm thinking there's something different about the shaft. Well, that file is high carbon steel. When you watch the sparks, they're going to be short and feathery with a lot of sparks, with a, a rapid explosion of sparks at the end of it. That's the carbon and the steel burning up. I'm going to take this lower grade piece of bolt and we'll see if we get some sparks off of that. See how the sparks on that are, are long? And they don't have the, the quick feathering out. That's a much lower grade of steel. This is the shaft that we just cut out of there. Hardly any sparks at all. This is a piece of cast iron, one of the, the Bearing clips off the drill that's too far gone to use, but it's made out of cast iron. See? No sparks. Very few sparks. Based on our quick and dirty test here, I'd say this is really low grade steel. It is steel, it's not cast, but it's not very good steel. Might even be wrought. Although I don't see any evidence of grain in it. But it's a very low grade of steel. That would explain why the threads chewed out of it and also why the bearing wore away so quickly. Now this is the chunk of bar stock that I'm gonna make the new shaft out of.
and it's 1020. Better grade of steel than that old bolt. But it's not hardenable. But it will make a good shaft. That's a job for in the morning.